Welcome back. So I hope you spent some time working on this question. Uh, if you are new to this video, I would like to pose a question to you before you uh, watch this tutorial, which is, I would like you to convert two meters square to centimeters uh, into some value in centimeters square. Um, if you have trouble thinking about this, you may refer to the previous videos for some clues and uh, you may pause for a while and then get back to the video uh, afterwards after you have done your work. Okay, so let's get started to explain this problem. Now before I go into the detail of this conversion, I want you to understand something that is very very basic in algebra and you will understand what's going on. What I want to point out is this. I would like you to understand the difference of x times x y cube and parentheses x y close parentheses uh, raised to the third power. Now, if you have taken algebra one or some kind of equivalent courses, you should understand that this is not the same as this one because for this one, it is equal to x cube y cubed. The, the, uh, the cubed outside of parentheses would distribute to all the terms, to all the terms inside the parentheses, uh, within, the, within the parentheses. So uh, you will see why I would bring this up because it is going to be very, very important. If you would like, I would highly recommend you to write this on the side of your notebook or your paper just to remind yourself, okay? So, I'm going to erase this. Okay, now, when we talk about conversions regarding to something that is squared or to some kind of power, students often struggle in this type of problem. And the reason why students would struggle is because it is just something that is not as simple as what they have done in the past or not as simple as what we have done in the previous tutorial. Now, let me tell you this. It is simple. Okay? It is simple. Do not think it is difficult because once you understand what we talked about in the last tutorial about the concept of one, you should have no problem of accomplishing this type of conversion. Okay? So, let's get started. So, to start the calculation, we write down what is given, okay? And, um, and for here, I'm going to use the conversion factor method, uh, or some people call it the factor label method, because this is something that we use uh, most of the time in chemistry and uh, in science classroom, in college or in high school or in middle school. So, um, we have to figure out what conversion factor to put in here. And based on our conversation, uh, or my instruction in the last tutorial, we understood that whatever in the numerator has to equal to whatever in the denominator. Okay. Now, one student, many students would commit this mistake. Students understand this. Okay, one meter is equal to one hundred centimeters. So if you have been using metric system, uh, you would use this to talk about height, okay, or length. Um, so this is something that is pretty much given. Okay, one meter is equal to one hundred centimeters. Now, we are talking about something squared, and I'm going to use red marker to write down what many students would commit this particular mistake. Okay. Now, first I want to point out that this is incorrect. This is incorrect. And why is it incorrect? Where did the mistake happen? Happen. Okay. So, let's take a look at this. This is a valid correct relationship. One meter is equal to 100 centimeter, centimeters. 
Now for this one, we don't have any clue at all. Okay, we don't have any clue at all. And when we write this, I would question, how do you know if this is correct? And students will be, well, this is to the power of one, this is to the power of one. And we see that this is to the second power, so we have to use the second power, square. That's correct in terms of thinking about both have to be squared. But we have to make sure that we square the terms correctly. Okay? And that relates to what I mentioned in the very beginning of the tutorial, the xy cube and x parentheses, xy close parentheses cubed. Now, if they are equal to each other, that means whatever power they raise to, they should still remain the same. Okay? They should still remain the same equality. But here, something is very, very strange. Students would selectively square the units only. And we don't have such a thing of putting a square selectively to a unit. If we do something on the left, we have to do the same thing on the right. If we square something on the, if we square, we have to square the entire left hand side. And when we do this, we have to do the same on the right hand side. So, when students have this kind of concept, it's very close to a correct concept. We just have to make a little bit of correction here. And I'm going to use a blue marker to make the correction. Okay, now I want you to see this. I want you to see that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters, and if we square the one meter, we square the 100 centimeters. And let's see what happened. And remember, we are we have to distribute the square to every single term within the parentheses. So square applied to one. One square is one meter squared. It is meter squared. On the right hand side, a hundred squared is is one hundred one is ten thousand. Ten thousand. Okay? One hundred squared is ten thousand. And then we have centimeters squared. So this is the most common mistake that students commit commit that one meter if you square it, you have to square the entire left hand side. And then on the right hand side, you have to square the entire right hand side in order to maintain a valid equality. Now, if you have trouble realizing this equality, let me draw you a picture. Let's imagine, oh, hold on. it is not a three dimensional object, it's a square. So let's say this. Let's say this is a square. Okay, and I'm going to use a measurement of meters, and it is one meter and one meter on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to ask you that what is the area? And you should know that it is length times height, so one meter times one meter is equal to one meter squared, because one times one is one, meter times meter is meter squared. Now, I would like to point out here also is that when we use the word meter, it is just like any other term. It is just like any variable that if they multiply together, they would become square. Okay? They would not magically to become something else. They still follow the mathematical rules that we learned in the past. Okay. Now, I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to use centimeter as the measurement. And it will be 100 centimeter for the length, 100 centimeter for the width. And then, if I ask, this, ask the same question, what is the area? Then you would say 100 centimeter times 100 centimeter is equal to, well, 100 times 100 is 10,000. And it will become centimeter squared. So I hope by using this diagram, you understand how we come up, how we validate this relationship. Okay, I hope you understand this. So, if we understand this part, we can move back to the question. Okay, so
So, meters, two meters squared. How can we convert this? How can we convert the meter squared to centimeter squared? Now, going back to the last tutorial, we talk about how the numerator has to equal to the denominator. So, in this case, we are going to make use of this equality to create our conversion factor. Okay? So, we are going to write this. And by making this conversion factor, we are going to get the correct answer. So the correct answer is 20,000 centimeters squared because the meter square is canceled out, so it becomes 2 times 10,000, which becomes 20,000, and we have centimeters squared just carried over. Okay? Now, I hope we are good with this example, and I want to show you that it is extremely simple as long as you understand that this conversion factor has to equal to the value of 1, the numerator has to equal to the denominator, and to validate this, we need to have a valid equality. Okay, So we always start off with the equality and then move on to, to, the, uh, to the creation of the conversion factor. Now, before we go to the next tutorial, I would like to ask you one question to think before you click to the next tutorial. And the question is this. Teachers would tell you that you would put the units you want on top. And the unit you would like to cancel out in the bottom. Why would the teacher say this? Okay. Now, after we do the math, we understand that it gives you a very nice looking answer. But why do we have to put this on top and put this in the bottom? Why does it make sense this way? So this is the question I'm giving you and I would like you to think about this before you click to the next tutorial.